All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we've got a short one to deal with, section B, the dampers. There's only one step too, B1, although there is a fair bit going on. Plus, we'll go over the way I initially set them up with a quick correction on how they're supposed to be set up. Right, so here we go then, section B, step one. In bag B, we get five sub bags, one with the damper bodies, another with the shafts and the small bits, one with the springs, some tubes of oil, and the last with all the plastic parts. As usual, we'll separate them out into different pots so we can easily find what we want as we go. The springs have a red and a green dot at one end, but for the time being, these don't really matter. But when we fit them to the chassis, we'll need to put them in the right places. That's a long way off yet though. We get two tubes of 35 white oil in the kit, which is a little bit different from the usual bottles. They'll still do the trick though. It's nice that they actually have the weight on them too. So many kits just give you a nondescript oil, which does make it really difficult to tune the dampers. Since all four of the dampers are exactly the same, we're just going to build one in this video and repeat off camera. Since this one's just one big build step, we're going to break it up a bit. So first we need two of the small clear o-rings and a small plastic spacer. I've also got the piston out ready for the next bit. Now we need one of the bodies where we unscrew the bottom cap. It's really, really important that we don't damage the O-rings as we assemble. It's critical they're in good condition so we don't end up with leaky dampers. Now there's a couple of ways to put them together, but either way you must lubricate them as you go. You can get special gunge to use. I quite often use 10,000 weight silicon diff oil. Or you can just use the oil in the kit. The thick stuff just makes it a little bit easier as it stays put while building. In the bottom of the dampers we need to stack up an o-ring, the spacer and another o-ring, adding plenty of oil at each stage. It's messy but more the merrier. On the dampers we can pop the bottom cap back on just half a turn to keep it all in place. The trick is, we really don't want to compress the o-rings. If they get squashed, the hole in the middle will end up being that bit smaller, making them easier to damage. On dampers where there's not so much space around the o-rings, you'd first pop the shaft through the body, then assemble the o-rings on the end, then pack them with the shaft already in place. Next, we need to fit the piston. All we need is the piston, the shaft and two E2 eclips. At the top of the shaft there's two grooves. We need to clip an e-clip into the bottom groove first using some pliers. Unfortunately axle don't give you any extra clips so you need to be super careful not to ping one off. If you're worried you can do the whole process with your hands inside a clear plastic bag. That way if you do lose one it can't go far. After the first e-clip we slide on the piston and follow that with a second e-clip. Next, we can pop the shaft into the body and very gently push it through the o-ring. It shouldn't take much force at all. Just a gentle wiggle to get the thread through. And if you really want to go all out, you can pop some more oil on the end of the shaft before going for it. Once through, we can tighten up the bottom cap, then fit the rod end and ball. Now we need to hold the shaft so it can't spin while threading on the rod end. But it's absolutely critical that we don't scratch the shaft. Any damage will eat the o-rings in no time, making the damper leak. The classic method is to use some cardboard in the jaws of your pliers. Parallel jawed pliers let you grip the shaft nice and square, while also magnifying the pressure, making them pretty much ideal. You can get away with standard pliers too, but there's also special soft jawed tools that you can get from model shops. Whatever you end up doing, just be careful. With the rod end threaded on, we need to pop a ball in the end, and that's the first row of the diagram complete. Now in this bit, we're going to be filling the damper with oil. Now the instructions really aren't great. We're going to take them literally just for fun, so we can see where you might trip up. Okay, for parts we need a big o-ring, a top cap, and an M2 by 5 screw. The manual also has an M2.5 by 3, 
but there weren't any in the Section B bags. There were, however, some slightly longer ones without anywhere else to go, so I guess we're supposed to use them. First, well, not any instructions. It's a good idea to thread the small screw in the top of the cap and do it up a few turns to start a thread. Once it's full of oil, you don't want to be fiddling around trying to get it started. Next, the big O-ring needs to go right up in the top of the cap. There's a recess just above the threads. The O-ring needs to be right up in there, even all the way around with no kinks. Just like the bottom O-ring, if it's wrong, you're going to have a leaky damper, so take your time and make sure. Next, we fill the body with oil. The diagram has us fill it right to the top. Next, we pop the cap on. To make sure the big O-ring gets some oil before it's fully seated, we're going to tip the damper over so the oil works its way round before nipping it up. Next, we pop the screw into the cap, screwing it all the way in until it just bottoms out. What we have now is a very tidy looking damper where the shaft won't go in more than a few millimetres. It's just like the shaft's hitting a wall. Well, what's happening is as we push the shaft in, it's trying to displace oil within the body. But that oil hasn't got anywhere to go. So essentially the damper's hydro-locking. On typical dampers, there would be a diaphragm that allows for the displaced oil without letting air into the oil. But these don't have one. You can, as I initially did, remove a little bit of the oil so the displaced oil can compress the air which works kind of like an aeration damper, but you don't get that super silky feel. After a bit of reading, I found a nice post on RC Crawler that immediately made the penny drop. So here we are a little bit later. The only difference here is I've already popped the ball with the built-in spacer to the top of the damper. Otherwise, it's right where we left off with a little air gap inside so the shaft can move. I'm going to pop the cap off and empty it out. The oil inside is going to be just fine, but we've got so much extra, why not just start again? We'll also need to remove that small screw in the cap. Right, so here we go then. Just as the manual says, we need to fill the damper right up to the top with oil. You can actually see quite clearly, if I push the shaft up, the oil is trying to overflow the top as the shaft displaces it. Next we can put the lid back on, getting it nipped up nice and snug. And now we have the critical part that's missing from the instructions. We need to wrap up the damper so we don't make a mess, then slowly push the shaft right to the top. The displaced oil will pour out from the hole in the cap. Hold the shaft right at the top, give it a quick wipe and install a small screw to seal it up. Now we have a silky smooth damper with pretty much no air and importantly, no hydro locking. Now, I'm still wondering exactly what's going inside. With the shaft all the way out, you'd think there would be a bit of a vacuum produced pulling in on the sides of the body and cap. I'd expect the shaft to be sucked back in, but it seems to be quite neutral. Anyway, now we have a nicely damping damper we can finish up. First, we slide a spring over the damper body, compress it, and slide in a spring retainer. Now, usually that would be it, but these retainers also have a retaining screw, an M2.5 by 10. A bit strange, the retainer ends up being clamped to the rod end. I've never lost a normal one, but clamping it is going to really make sure. And there we go, one damper ready to fit to the chassis, at least once we've built it. It really is lovely and smooth now that it's been put together right. We'll have to wait until the truck's up and running to see how well these dampers hold their oil. My only real issue with them isn't the dampers themselves, but the instructions. There needs to be an extra step between fitting the cap and the screw to show the shaft being pushed right up. You really shouldn't have to refer to a forum or have prior experience of this type to get through the build. The hardware's top notch, but the instructions not so much. Well, this video ended up a bit longer than expected, but I'll still upload some trucks messing about in the woods, so we've got a reasonable amount of content this week. It'll be in a separate video with a link in the description. As always then, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!